All right, so it's uh, it's five minutes already, Prof. So I'm going to do a short introduction. So welcome back, everyone. And our next session, our final session for our summit today, our inaugural summit, will be uh, by doc by Professor Dr. Thomas Rao, MD. And uh, Prof. Thomas began his career as a conventional physician. You know, your your conventional doctor. However, he noticed that his patients were not getting uh, better or as better as he wanted them to be or as fast as he wanted, to, wanted them to be. So he started to explore other forms yeah, of medicine and other alternative methods. So in 1997, he has been actively since, yeah, since 1997, he has been actively involved in building up partner clinics in the US, Switzerland, even uh, in Malaysia, Vietnam and Cyprus. And he also founded the Biomedicine International AG with the aim of establishing a movement that becomes an international movement. And he's getting there. Uh, in February of this year, 2021, uh, Dr. Rao opened a new treatment entity uh, called the Biomed Center Sonnenberg in Schwalbrunn. If I, I don't know if I pronounced that properly, but yeah, Schwalbrunn, Switzerland. Yeah, And uh, the center also has its own uh, Swiss mountain hotel and also a vegetarian restaurant. So with us today, Prof. Dr. Thomas is going to share with us about teeth and health, uh, migraine, rheumatism, and cancer, disease, teeth as root causes or as root cause to chronic diseases. Yeah. So your teeth or your, your, your dental health and the risk of disease. So thank you so much, everyone, for staying engaged. And uh, off to you now, Professor Ra. Okay, thank you very much for for inviting me to speak. Well, as always, I, I don't have enough time, but so we, I go into the, the topic uh, quickly. I, sh I would like to talk about something which is very important, which is the, the, the connection between teeth and, and uh, diseases. The teeth are in, well, very much implicated in, in everything which goes on in the body and in our clinic and also in the new clinic and since many, many years, we integrate <clears throat> the, the dental dimension extremely intensively into the treatment of, of chronic patients. I'm not a dentist, I'm a medical doctor and we, we treat more or less, well, my about half of my patients are cancer patients from all over the world, but I see in them that we can change the cancer uh, progress or the cancer malignancy very much by detoxification of the patient. And one of the very important factors are the oh, oops, oops, oops. Uh, one of the very important factors are the the integration of the dental problems. And we see this, it's, it's shocking, it's super shocking that in my patients who have been in oncological clinics, they come from all over the world, they, they, when we test the panoramic x-ray, which we do, I will show you uh, many uh, examples. When we see these uh, panoramic x-rays, we see that there are uh, infections, in nearly all the patients who have a bad, a bad uh, cause of their cancerous or also autoimmune diseases. And when we, when we do the dental work, the, the holistic dental work uh, with our dentist, we, have, we used to have a dental department. And now in my small boutique clinic, the new one, which we have in the mountains, we also work together with a with uh, one of my old dentists who worked with me since 20 years. And if we then do the dental work, sometimes it's not even very much which we have to do, then the, the, the cause of the disease uh, really changes. So, <clears throat> so it is one of the very, very, very important factors in the treatment of our patients. Of course, we do a lot of multi-module treatment on autoimmune diseases and also on cancer diseases. Well, uh, 
we, we are a clinic which is very specialized for treating cancer patients and autoimmune patients and neurological patients. We, who comes to us, we only have these complicated cases. So I do this since many years. I, I, I jump over this and uh, I do this since many more than 30 years now. I do a very, very intensive biological treatment and I wrote some books, which you see here. And one thing which is extremely important, why do, why do we have these amazing successes with our patients? It is the strictness. We do our treatment very strict. We tell the patients what to eat. We clean them. We do the detoxification. We do the intestinal work very, very intensively. I'm so, so, so happy to, to just have heard what my previous speaker had told that how important the intestinal flora is. These are all the things and we really do it. We do not only work against cancer, you know, we work for the patient, we rebuild the organs, we do the upbuilding and we do the detoxification work. And the detoxification work is very important. And also that we do the, in this detoxification, the dental work. So I will show you cases. <clears throat> and always really consider the teeth. Why it's so important to know this? It, <clears throat> because dental problems are very often a key factor or even can be the root cause of chronic diseases. So this, some of the slides are, by the way, by my <clears throat> dear friend, Dr. Elmar Jung, who worked with me. He's a dentist and he is a very strict biological dentist. The, <clears throat> the main dental challenges are which, we, which the, the teeth can in, in, uh, impact to the body is toxic load here, toxins, then infections, also the structure. And there is one very important thing, <coughs> the body tooth connection. Each tooth, I see, I, I have here this slide, <coughs> each tooth has a, a relation to the to some of the organs that's very important to know each tooth has a connection to the to the, the to meridians and the meridians have their connections to the organs so the teeth are directly and densely connected to the to the the, the body so uh, we made a, a statistic only as an example. We made a statistic on breast cancer patients on 200 breast cancer. Well, no, seriously, it was about 150 uh, very well controllable breast cancer patients. We did the oops, we did the oops, <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> we did. We did an analysis on their dental work and we saw that the breast teeth, which according to this dental uh, connection slide, the, the breast teeth were impacted. So we have a lot of patients who have root canals or toxic load or bacteria on the stomach meridian tooth and the stomach meridian tooth is connected to the breast. In 90, you, you can hardly believe it, on these 150 patients, in 97% of the breast cancer patients, the ladies <clears throat> in an age of 35 up to, to high, so in 97% of these patients, breast cancer patients, we had a infected teeth on the breast meridian, which is the stomach meridian. Mainly the seventh teeth, the molar, the first and the second molar of the upper jaw, they are the teeth which are densely connected. I wrote this in a Congress and then in this Congress, they said, oh, yeah, uh, 
in, in ladies of this age, they all have root canals and they all have mercury fillings or infections in the dental. Yes, of course, I expected this question. And we tested also the same age lady group, but without the healthy ladies, I tested and only 35% had root canals on this meridian. So there was a significant difference between the cancer patients and their T's and the healthy patients and their T's. So for me, it was absolutely clear, absolutely clear that we have to integrate this factor. And if we have a breast cancer, which is the most frequent cancer, which we have in our clinic, the breast cancer patients, the, the ladies, in men, it's the prostate cancer, but on, on the ladies, it's the breast cancer. And we began to do the detoxification, the dental work on these patients. And we have many cases in whom even stage four cancer just stopped. So what we say very often, when a patient comes with a cancer stage three or four metastasis infiltrating to whatever organs, it can't be removed. You know, surgically, you can't remove these, these patients. So we have this biting dog. So what we try to do, we give, so to say, we put the dog to sleep. So we change the metabolism of the cancer patients by detoxification. This is the very important things. So <clears throat> what the teeth can do, the toxic load of the teeth, root canal are always toxic because the root canal material contains contains toxic materials. It contains cortisol, it contains anti, uh, antibacterial remedies, and it contains preservatives. <coughs> there are even uh, materials in the root canal material which are cancerogenic. So then the next thing is the metals, the mercury, the mercury of the amalgam fillings. Then the composites, they contain glue, chemicals. Then the implants, the titanium, they produce electricity, uh, galvanicity. And the very bad thing is the cavitational osteonecrosis. I will talk about this later. So teeth, which were root canals, they are always dead teeth. And dead teeth, they, they, they produce death toxins, different death toxins, which can interfere in the lymphatic system. The teeth are very much uh, integrated in the whole body's lymphatic system, so they have an impact. <clears throat> infections, dental dental uh, problems, they can make infections, gum disease, root canal and dead teeth. And these are the things which we can see. And then there is, well, this is a Chinese meridian thinking, but it has really proven, and it was also taken over by all these German uh, uh, naturopathic doctors, the connection between the teeth and the body, the connection between the teeth and the body. And it is on these slides. There are many books about this. It's not just my crazy idea. Every tooth is connected to the meridian and by connecting with the meridian, also with the organs. It's very important. And here you see, <coughs> you see this uh, connection slide. That's what I have here on my on my wall. Uh, in another way, and well, that would be would be nice to have a possibility to spread this to the participants, that so that they see. Now let us begin with a case. <clears throat> I well, I would have many such cases. You see here. There is a root canal on a front teeth. 
a root canal on a front teeth. This patient was a dear friend of mine. Well, he, he was a patient and he became a very dear friend of mine over the years. And he comes from America and he had a bladder pencil. A, <clears throat> a bladder pencil and he got uh, reoccurring bladder cancer and he got cystoscopy, you know, endoscopies to the blood out the bladder, they did a chemotherapy installation every three months and it came back again and again and again and it began to infiltrate. And this was the, the moment when this patient was coming to us, infiltrating, now it was stage three, bladder cancer, urotel carcinoma of the bladder this patient had. He is more or less in my age, but this was fifth. Well, this was nearly 20 years ago when he came with this picture. So, <clears throat> what we see here mercury fillings. Mercury is very toxic to the very toxic and very cancerogenic. So, mercury has to be removed. We see here old mercury fillings. And this has to be removed. Of course, nobody told him, even though he was in the best hospitals, uh, oncology clinics in the New York area. So <clears throat> I told him, look, you have the bladder tools. When you look on this slide here, it is exactly the tools which interferes with the bladder meridian and the bladder as a organ. So this is a contributing factor. I don't say this causes the cancer, but it's a contributing factor. And he said, oh, no, I'm in the public. I, I have to speak openly. I'm in a politician a position. I can't do, I can't have the tooth removed. Well, I said, well, we can do other treatments too, but you have to remove this tooth. We did our treatment, biological cancer treatment, Honestly, it did not really work well. It was a little bit delayed, it, but it came back and he had to, and they told him you have to remove the bladder, which would be a very, very big thing. And to, to do a small intestinal uh, new bladder operation, which is super big operation. So I told him, no, please remove the tools. Please detoxify, please. Finally, otherwise I don't co continue to treat you. You have to be strict. So please remove the mercury fillings. Well, he did the mercury fillings. He removed the teeth and, well, as I said before, the biting dog fell asleep and the cancer began to change its, its uh, behavior and just fell asleep nearly 20 years from now. More and more, it took longer and they had to do every six months, they had to do every nine months, then every year. And now he goes to cystoscopy every one year, more or less, for controlling and there is no more cancer. He did not operate. What he did is detoxification, long-term antioxidative treatment, long-term uh, biological cancer treatment. He even bought a device, a, a, a magnetic field, a pulsed magnetic field device, which counteracts the electromagnetic load from outside. And he removed this infected bladder tooth. So, well, <clears throat> This was this case. He is now. And we saw there was another thing. Cancer is always, is always based on many, many uh, reasons. When you go to an oncologist or to the, the so-called specialized clinics, they say, oh, we do not know why cancer comes. That, that, that cause is not known. There is no cause, there are causes, always many causes. 
And this is important. You have to look strictly, you have to analyze for all the potential cancerogenic substances which could be around. And here in these patients, we see perfluorooctanic acid, which is one thing. We see DDT, the pesticide DDT. Where does this man have the pesticide DDT from? We do not really know, but we can test it. It is a pesticide, which if, if you have it in your body, it can create cancer. So he had mercury, he had the tooth, he has the pesticide. He had already three reasons. And we will see on other patients that if we look consequently, if we strictly go into all these reasons, then we can see that the patients have different causes. And then you have to remove these things and the cancer can fall asleep. I have so many patients, breast cancer patients, I have prostate, the prostate is the easiest one to treat. And we have even this bladder cancer, urotel bladder cancer, stage three just came to stop because we got detoxified and because we did the dental work. So <clears throat> why are these things not done in the oncological clinics? You do not really only have to work against the cancer. No, you have to remove the causes which which create cancer. Otherwise, you can do chemo, you can do operation, and it doesn't work. So you have to be strictly, and you have to detoxify the body. And look here, on the, this is the same patient. We did the thermography. We saw the whole area here, very hot, lymphatically toxic. The lymphatic toxins in the neck comes from the teeth. It also shows this, and here you see the focus in the bladder on the thermography. So toxins, we have mercury, we have in cosmetics, medication, fish, pesticide, and dental fillings. And it also is in vaccines, not in the COVID vaccine, but, but uh, mercury is still thiomersal, thiomersal is still in vaccinations. So we intoxify our children with these vaccination toxins. I don't speak about COVID vaccination. This, I speak about all the other vaccines which the children get so many. And we intoxify these poor children. Well, <clears throat> mercury is a real problem. It is placenta toxic. It's neurotoxic. It releases vapors all day long and it increases electromagnetic load. It just makes a resonance, the mercury in your teeth to the electromagnetic load. Everybody knows that, <coughs> everybody knows that there is electromagnetic load. We speak about 4G, we speak about 5G, which is so bad. Dear people, dear, uh, colleagues who look now at this, we can't change the world. We can stand up against 4G and 5G, but probably to be reasonable, we probably can't change much. The politicians, the, 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 the financial interests are too high, but we can change our patients' uh, respond to the electromagnetic load. And as long as they have mercury fillings in, as long as they have root canals in the teeth, it, it vibrates with these electromagnetic load. It increases the effect of the electromagnetic load. So you have to detoxify the, <coughs> the patient and you decrease the effect in this patient to electromagnetic load. So <clears throat> mercury symptom, amalgam symptoms, there are so many possible symptoms. <clears throat> Dysbiosis of the gut, candida. Well, there is, my experience, there is more or less no, no uh, other, no candida around, candida in the intestines, candida in the mouth, candida in the vagina, these patients, they always have 
heavy metal toxicity. Candida needs to, to develop needs metals and it loves the mercury. Chronic fatigue, memory loss, hyperactivity of the, in the children, concentration loss, autism. We have so many autistic children, it's really traumatic. Now, due to Corona, nobody talks again, uh, talks anymore about this, this very sad cases, these autistic children. But <clears throat> it is epidemic. We have so many autistic children and we have so good results when we consequently detoxify these <clears throat> these children from organic and inorganic toxins, multiple sclerosis, depression, irritability, and so on. Mercury, you can test, you can drain, you can remove the mercury fillings. And if you have a chronic patient, look at the teeth. In many cases, in many patients, we can do a huge shift to better health only with little, with little uh, things in the dental area, removing the mercury fins, but correctly, you have to protect. There was a, <clears throat> I can tell you a case, a very interesting case. This was a, <clears throat> sorry, this was a young man, well, young, 39 years old, He's a, one of the biggest entrepreneurs in Hungary. And <clears throat> well, he went to Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe to, to hunt. Is their plane, they have their private plane. He went to Zimbabwe and on the plane down, on the flight down, he already began to notice, oh, I can't move my leg anymore. Good luck, his father was also in the plane, he's also a pilot, and so he took over. And then <clears throat> they came to Harare, and in Harare, in the, in the capital of, uh, they went to the hospital, they didn't find anything. The background was that he was, <clears throat> that he was a post-vaccinal case after a typhus vaccination because he was told when you go to to Zimbabwe to this African country you have this is a tropic country you have to do the typhus vaccination and he did shortly before he left which is anyhow a mistake he should have waited six weeks but well anyhow and this was a, a vaccination uh, complication and he got a paralysis he had to fly back and he went to hospital. And when he came, when he came to us, this was <clears throat> nine months later, nine months later, he came to us in the wheelchair because he was spastic and <clears throat> he had to put his, his legs up in the wheelchair because otherwise it was so painful a severest neuropathy in the feet, paresthesia, so much that he didn't feel his feet anymore and he couldn't walk and it was so painful. This was the, the situation on this 39-year-old patient. So what are we doing? We are looking for toxins. We are looking for viruses. We are looking for heavy metals. We are looking for organic toxins and we are looking for the teeth. And only if you do all these approaches, such complicated causes, they have to be treated multi-modules. They have to treat it on many different levels. And that's what we did. You see him here, he allowed me to take this picture. Well, I don't show the film, he could not walk. Nine months in the wheelchair. After three months, three weeks of detoxification and upbuilding treatment, IV infusions, alpha lipoic acid infusions, then other infusions, vitamin infusions, detoxification, dental work, he could walk 
again. He could walk again. What we found in the unconscious nerve system testing, day one, extreme sympathetic tonus and parasympathetic system was very low. Vagus energy low, sympathetic system uh, sim uh, very, very high. So he was in a unconscious body stress, which was unbelievable. I have hardly ever seen such a, a situation on the test of the unconscious nerve system. So he can't do anything against this, but it shows when parasympathetic system is so low, it shows that he also has a deficiency on the intestinal flora. This proves the intestinal flora and the vagus vagal system, the, the parasympathetic system is very, very low. So this, <clears throat> this person not only has the complication of the vaccination, you know, this person was already on a situation without symptoms, but a, <clears throat> of toxicity, of intestinal dysbiosis, and of toxicity in the intestines, and the dental problems, which we will see, which he did not feel strong man, 39 years old, entrepreneur, he was so active all the years, he didn't feel all the loads, and then the vaccination came, whoosh, and it switched his health to to horrible situation. It was not only the vaccination. All the patients who have vaccinations uh, side effects, they always have other things, and you have to look for these other things too. That's so important. And the same for cancer. There are always, always are toxic loads or these bacteria loads or dental foci in cancer. And if you change this too, then you will have a much better immune system and a much better system. So in such a case, we do, we look for food intolerances. We look for rantes, rantes, we will talk later. This is a cytokine where you can prove, you can nowadays, you can prove that the root canal or a, a dental, dental cavitation is interfering with your immune system. Biological medicine is the most advanced medicine in the world. It's very, very scientific nowadays, and we have tests for all these things. I can test if a dental situation does interfere with your immune system. We have this Rantis, Rantis, it's a cytokine test, which we can do. Then we can look at the thrombocytes, we can look at the, the adrenal uh, situation, and we can test for toxins. This man had a high cobalt load, a high cobalt load from other chemicals which he was taken before. And the last thing which he had, <clears throat> he had this focus here, dental infection. Here on the left side, we see this dental infection and these dental toxins, these bone toxins, they interfered. And we also see here, the last tooth has a root canal which was very uh, loading too. The, this man had a high Rantes level. He had a deficiency of detoxification. He had mercury filling. He had cancerogenic or neurogenic, neurotoxic situation on the teeth. And we removed all this. And after three weeks, being paralyzed for nine months before, after three weeks of intensive treatment, he got out. And I can tell you, this man, he is one of the most uh, important entrepreneurs in Hungary. He went to all the hospitals. He went to London, he went to everywhere, and nobody looked for all these backgrounds. Nine months of, of really bad situation. 
removal of the teeth here, that this wisdom tooth root canal, <clears throat> and so on, and and uh, uh, operation on this area. Well, these are the situations what we do in such a case, and also in a toxic, I uh, know, in a in a cancer patients. What we do is always the same thing. We do a multi-causal evaluation, toxic load. We look for viruses. We look for dental situation. And we always make a gastrointestinal evaluation and treatment. Very, very important. Ulcerative colitis, a patient. <coughs> well, <laughs> we all... <laughs> We always get it so it's in a way sad we get the, the bad cases they come to us to switzerland who go so far we even have a lot of malaysian patients who came to us <coughs> what we find here in this ulcerative colitis look at this molar the lower molar when you look here that's this tooth and it, it says large intestine this makes a chronic irritation on the large intestine. And the patient was, this was removed. We see this big, big, big granuloma. And we see a granuloma up here on this root canal teeth. So this is horribly, horrible situation on dental infection. And these kind of situations, look at this. This was the tooth which we pulled out. It's just, well, you can understand that this, tea, this tooth can make a chronic infection. And the, he did not have symptoms at on this tooth. No single symptom because this tooth was dead. And the dead tooth no more hurts. This was the, the cavitation which we took out. It's just putrefied. So dead tooth, gangrene, bacteria loaded, toxin are spreading, and the energy flow is interrupted. We, you can understand when you see these are radiographic, <coughs> radio. Uh, George Meinig did, did, uh, did, this was this pioneer in, in holistic dentistry. He did radiographic filling with a contrast uh, thing and he made pictures and you see these are the root canals you can't fill these kind of root canals even if the dentist is a good dentist he can never fill such a root canal and in the side channels we have a lot of toxins and bacteria which will always stay in these side channels Every root canal treated tooth is a focus and has a cancerogenic function. It can create cancer. And every amalgam filling has also a cancerogenic and a neurotoxic effect. You have to remove this. And if you want to be a successful successful doctor you have to be strict on this otherwise you won't have success why is orthodox medicine so weak against cancer because they don't consider these things <clears throat> look i'm not against chemotherapy but i'm against doing only chemotherapy and not looking for the reasons of the cancer because as long as you have such foci such disturbance fields in your body, it can be in the intestines, it can be on, a, on, on other sites, it can be on the teeth, as long as you have these things, cancer will come again. This is why we have these high reoccurrences after chemotherapies. Then, <clears throat> well, these are pictures also which explain that you can never, never fill the side channels. And in these root canal teeth, we see Streptococcus intermedius, Streptococcus sanguis, which makes septic, septic problems, uh, <coughs> Propioni bacteria acnei, Propioni bacteria acnei, 
makes cancer. It is known to be cancerogenic bacteria for prostate cancer. In prostate cancer, they found in 98% of the prostate cancer when they did cultures, not only histologies, but cultures, they found Propionibacterium bacterium acnei. And in 100% of root canal teas, always, always, always in 100%, you have this cancerogenic bacteria. It only has to come from the tooth to the prostate. And then perhaps 10 years later, it creates cancer on the prostate. And if it's on this tooth, which goes over the lymph system, the prostate, the bladder meridian tooth, goes even more to these organs. So this is why root canal teeth are always cancerogenic. They can create chronic diseases and, <clears throat> and they can, according to the place where they are, even more to this or the other organ. So you have to consider this. Well, <clears throat> what can root canal do? Uh, it, it can make heart diseases, breast cancer, bronchitis, colitis. <clears throat> it can make breast cancer, colitis, epilepsy, and, and, and so many different diseases can be caused by dental. So what you have to learn from this speech, I know it's a little bit difficult, the whole thing, but what you have to learn from this speech is that you have, if you have a cancer or if you have chronic disease, you really have to think about dental and evaluate. And we have to find a way that perhaps you even can send your panoramic x-ray or your, your doctor can consult with us so that we can, can tell you if your dental, if we find a panoramic x-ray, we can tell you if your teeth disturb your body. Well, I... <clears throat> I define, I, I developed a, now comes a different topic. I developed a, a treatment or an approach, a three phase program to apply to all chronic health problems. And it's very, very, very simple. It is first detoxification because most of the chronic patients, they have a toxic load. Secondly, the biggest organ in the body is the intestines. And did you know that on the intestines, 90% in an adult of the T cells, my previous speaker, this lady, very, very well, she spoke about the T cells and the immune system. But did you know that the immune system lays in the intestines, in the pales patches? And if you, have, <clears throat> if you have a leakiness of the gut or if you have a dysbiosis, these bacteria, uh, these, <clears throat> these toxins which go through the leakiness of the gut, they irritate the, the, intestinal, immune, uh, the intestinal immune system, they irritate the pales patches. And these pales patches, they get active in the intestines, irritable bowel syndrome, colitis or whatever it may, may be, and they are no more available against the cancer. If you have a diseased intestine, your T cells, they won't be active in your cancer where they would be needed. That's why if you have a chronic disease, if you have a, a cancer disease, you have to build up your intestinal health and the bacterial flora. And we developed products, we developed products which build up this intestinal flora. It's the best essential, essential uh, <clears throat> pro, uh, bacteria which are essential microflora, EM flora, which comes from Earth. 
well, <clears throat> and then you can regenerate the intestinal system, regenerate the, the after you detoxify, after you build up, you release all the load from your body, and then you can go and build up the, uh, the, the organs. So this is the program what we do. And for each of these, these pillars, for each of these pillars, we have diagnostics, very specific diagnostics and also therapies. <clears throat> okay, what we find is always the same. We do a panoramic, on each patient who comes to us, we do a panoramic X-ray in every patient. Then we test for NICOS, which is infections of the in, in infections of the, the bone. We do additional cytokine tests and run tests because I can tell, as I told you already, I can tell you if the uh, focus is, is relevant. Then <clears throat> in certain cases, we test for the so-called xenohormones. Xenohormones, that's, these are hormone-like substances which comes from outside and these hormone-like substances they can interfere with your hormonal system and can make <coughs> cancerogenic hormonal influences which creates prostate cancer which creates breast cancer which can create pancreas cancer and well, these are the main cancers which are ovarian cancer it can create so these so-called xenohormones, bisphenol, pyrethroids, perfluorooctanic acid, and so on. And we find this such a load in nearly all the cancer patients. And I would say in nearly hundred, in nearly hundred percent of our patients with neurological diseases. We find such loads, such from outside, exogenic toxic load, organic toxic load, from pesticides, from sprays, from preservatives, from colors and dilutants of colors. In the new, in the modern world, we have so many toxic load. We work together with the state lab for toxicology. And I send my patients blood and urine to this official Switzerland official state laboratory. I know the leading doctor, Professor Kruslin. He is a genius for toxicology. And he, he calls me, Thomas, what does this patient have? Well, the patient has ovarian cancer. Well, this is unbelievable, such a toxic load. I ask him, what do other clinics, oncological and neurological clinics find? What values do they find on their patients? All these fancy clinics. And he tells me, and he's the only one in Switzerland who does this test. He tells me, oh, Thomas, your clinic is the only clinic who tests these things, but they are cancerogenic toxins. Not only this, you can drain them. It takes a certain time, but if you drain consequently and strictly over several months, we can do it at home, we begin in our clinic and then we can do it continuation at home. Then the toxic load decreases and the cancer behaves differently, gets less malignant. We have many cases in whom PET scans no more showed after several months of our treatment. Cancer is still there, but it's no more metabolically active. After we detoxify, after we build up the immune system, after 
we, <coughs> we pull up the intestinal uh, mucous membranes and the flora. And we have something very, very interesting. <coughs> so it has a, <coughs> a strange sound here. So we, <coughs> we do, we have another test and this is the gene test for detoxification capacity. And we can test glutathione transferase. We can test methylfolate transferase. We test epoxide hydrolase. And we test cytocystatine C. Sorry, we test. These are the four genes which we test. So I can tell you, you, dear patient, do you have the capacity in your body to detoxify and to protect yourself? Well, we can test this. It's a genetic test. It's not even, it costs, this test costs about, I think, 200 US dollar. It's not, not even so expensive. But we can tell you, are you able to detoxify? The Hungarian guy with his spastic paralysis, he had a deficiency to detoxify. This is why during his life, he got more and more toxic and he did not even notice. But I can tell him now, you have a lack of glutathione transferase as an example on him. And we can give this glutathione transferase, we can give, we can give the glutathione the reduced glutathione we can give to him and then the body begins to detoxify. He just has the lack of this detoxification. <clears throat> but he does not feel toxic. He gets neurological disease. You do not feel toxic when you have a toxic load which creates your cancer. You have the cancer. But you won't get free from cancer if you do not manage to detoxify. It will come again because the cause is not, not removed. There are good scientific work on this, <coughs> which shows you average Americans, East Coast Americans, they have in 12% already, they have, they have these uh, mutations. And in Lyme disease, so-called Lyme disease patients, 25, this is official studies. So it shows that patients who have Lyme disease, it's not only the bacteria problem. No, it is also the detoxification problem because these patients in a very high percentage, they not even can, are able to detoxify. Now, I do not have it here, unfortunately. The next circle, our cancer patients, we did a study on our American cancer patients and in 40, 40% of their situation, they had a lack of detoxification capacity. All in all, cancer is a toxically caused disease, clear for me, and we have to detoxify. And a big amount of real kind of toxins comes from the dental area. Well, we would have many different cases. This Indian lady, 56 year old Indian lady with a fast progressive neuromuscular deterioration. She couldn't walk anymore. She was in wheelchair. And her daughter, by the way, also had a muscular deficiency, also had problems with walking. So this shows there was a certain genetic component to this function, but not only. And we had to find a reason. Well, and there is never one reason. There is many reasons to such complex diseases. We found DDT, but in India, still DDT, this pesticide, is in the groundwater. And on her area, 
outside Delhi, where she came, the toxic load on the groundwater, but also on all the vegetables and all the products is very high. Well, why does she get this neurological disease? Because she also had the other part of the, <clears throat> of the slide is she also had very many uh, toxins. She had mercury, she had nickel, she had copper, cadmium, arsenic and lead. Very super toxic. Well, why? Because she was one of these ladies who does not detoxify in her own body. She doesn't have the, that's a genetical problems. But this is not just God's load. No, we can do something. When we know this detoxification deficiency, we can detoxify specifically. We can supplement the glutathione, the reduced glutathione. We can supplement the selenium, which it needs to reduce the glutathione. And then the disease gets better. And again, look at this lady's dental situation. You know, this lady who came to us from India after years of disease, they were everywhere. They were in the best clinics, but the best clinics are specialized clinics. They don't have the overview anymore. Specialization is the big weakness of modern medicine, that nobody integrates. What we need is an integrative medicine and not a super specialized medicine. She had this severest foci, hair infection, root canal. This is the absolute catastrophe, this dental situation here. And we see that this is so neurotoxic, endocrinologically toxic, that she has a severest deficiency of, of the neuroendocrine hormones. Noradrenaline was deficient. So she had a adrenal fatigue, this lady. It's always multi-causal. And we see an inflammatory situation on the small intestines. When we do all these shivers, as many of our patients who come to us, all these complicated patients, they have many reasons for their disease. And if you go one after the other, but we do it parallelly, but if you go one after the other to these reasons, <clears throat> then we can release even from very complicated, unclear diseases, we can release their symptoms very, very much. You see a weak intestinal bacteria, lack of detoxification bacteria. <clears throat> when we do in our patients, we do the, in all our cancer patients, we do a comprehensive intestinal evaluation, comprehensive stool analysis. We test all the bacteria. And in 100% of our cancer patients, we find a decrease of Bacteroides bacteria. The Bacteroides bacteria, which are the most uh, numerous bacteria in a normal situation, these Bacteroides bacteria, they are decreased and they would do the immune stimulation of the T cells. Bacteroides, they release substances which in the Peyer's patches, it activates the T cells. So it acts these bacteria, which you would need in your intestines, they activate your intestinal immune system, which you need against the cancer. The 
T cells. And when we activate this bacteroides, when we put the bacteroides back to the intestines with a vegan nutrition, this is why we do the vegan nutrition for several weeks in our cancer patients. When they come, they have to have in our mountain hotel, which is anyhow beautiful. So they get a strict vegan diet for several weeks if they stay so long. And we, we supplement the bacteroides bacteria. Only essential microflora can supplement the normal probiotics that don't contain the bacteroides. So it's only possible in liquid probiotics. So that's what we do. And well, we can measure the bacteria which increase, but we also measure the T cell activity and the T cell activity of the of the patient's T cell, we test blood on T cells and we put them into this diet change and upbuilding of the intestines and the T cells, they increase measurably, sometimes by factor 10, they increase. And the T cells, the cancer patient needs to work inside against your cancer cells yourself. Again, the same DDT, again, the same, another patient, <coughs> mercury load, arsenic, arsenic gets more and more frequent, aluminium is nearly pandemic now, we have so many. Now, <coughs> these are substances, we provide lecithin, choline, alpha lipoic acid, we provide to the patient, <coughs> sorry, to, to be, uh, to, to upbuild the, the unconscious nerve system. This is another cancer lady. A cancer lady, colon cancer stage four, came from the Arabian country, colon cancer stage four, after operation, after several chemotherapies, after radiation, and in a reoccurrence. And she was told, we can't do anything anymore. These kind of patients, they come to us, to my clinic. And, well, <clears throat> it's, a, it's a, an American lady who came from, who lives in the Arabian countries, and she came. <clears throat> and I told her, well, what do you expect from me? You had everything already. We can only look what are the cancer reasons? And honestly, she knew that there is no more chance. More or less, she was told, go home and, and uh, fix your things and, and you have a life expectancy of only several months. Dear colleagues, this was many years ago. I told her, look at this dental situation. This was absolutely horrible. Focus everywhere. Root canals, dead teeth, broken teeth. This is the pure infection. Such a situation takes away your immune system. Your immune system is not only toxically blocked, you will have cancerogenic toxins in this dental situation, but you also have a deep, a deep uh, suppression of your immune system. And if what I can provide to you is a detoxification and a dental work to release your immune system. She said, okay, that's what we do. And I have no other chance anymore. That's what she said. <clears throat> and she took all the teeth, teeth not all the teeth, all she still has very many good teeth, but all these horrible teeth she took out. Fully putrefied, uh, <coughs> putrefied, focus infections. This what, and this is now several years since the cancer activity decreased. We found other toxins too. This was the situation to explain a little bit better. Here was pure pus and infection, 
granulomas contain anaerobic bacteria, cancerogenic bacteria, <coughs> cresols, cadaverin, and which makes <coughs> the, uh, which are cancerogenic and what we also find cadmium, arsenic, the presence of cadmium increases the toxicity of mercury by factor 200. She had arsenic, aluminium, nickel, and so on. And these were the reasons for her situation. What we did is we detoxified this lady, and this is what we just did. I ran out of time, I'm so sorry, but, <clears throat> but we would have many other cases. Only very short. Now, this is a very good, well, it's a technically good uh, X-ray, panoramic X-ray. We have a more, even a more detailed. I will just to, because you don't see much here, you do not see the, the infections above these root canals. But if we do a panoramic 3D X-ray, a tomography X-ray, we see up here much better that there are these bacterial loads, which even makes this cyst here and this thickening of the mucous membranes of the sinus. You see much, much, much better here the infection. This tooth has to be removed because it creates a chronic infection here. You see this much better on the dental situation. Another patient is migraine. <clears throat> this was a patient with migraine. You do not really see much here, but when you look here, you see up here that there is a bone infection. You see it on the 3D. So on the 3D, you can see things much, much better. That's for more for the professional people here and the dentist. How important it is to make in unclear cases a 3D panoramic X-ray, and you see this bone putrefying <coughs> infection, we call it NICO, N-I-C-O, neuralgia inducing chronic hostitis. And when you remove these kind of things, you see this smelling putrefying uh, like, like a gel, the bone, the uh, top, super toxic situation. Well, that's more or less what I wanted to tell you. There are so many different techniques to see. This is a thermography technique. We can do ultrasound, we can do thermography uh, here on these, and we can test these. Rantes. Rantes is a test which tells you if your, can, your dental focus is significant. How much more time do I have to talk? Uh, no more time, it is off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, <clears throat> it would be more for the professionals what comes now. What is very, very important that you really know you have to treat very intensive. You, you have to think in every disease, you have to think of the detoxification. There are techniques where you can very super specifically can find what toxins is bothering your health. So I close here, even though I would have more slides. I thank you very, very much for listening and perhaps there are some questions. Uh, wonderful. Uh, wonderful, Prof. Wonderful. Uh, maybe many, many questions. And some questions from uh, the same person who uh, very, very uh, concerned also. So let me just uh, ask you as many as I can. Yeah. That's, yes. the, benefit. That's the benefit of being the last speaker. <laughs> so let me see. Okay. So we have the question here is, uh, okay. If there's an infection in the implant, what is the next course of action? Can one undo an implant that has gone wrong? Is that possible, Prof? <clears throat> well, the answer is yes. So the problem is 
the implant is always a foreign body. Even if you have, well, the titanium implants, they can make uh, metal toxicity and oxidation uh, phenomena. Uh, and the zirconium prop, uh, implants, which are the modern ones, and they are also problematic because they are still a foreign body and the, and the bone notices. So if this is the case that, <clears throat> well, I must say most of the implants, they work quite well. So that's why I'm not principally against implants. We even do zirconium implants ourselves in our dental department. <clears throat> so, but we have to look. And now a patient comes with a chronic disease. Unfortunately, we have again and again patients who come after implantology and we get chronic diseases or neurological diseases. We are quite often we see this. Then we do a panoramic x-ray. I do, if it's still unclear, I do a, a 3D x-ray and I test run tests and then I can see and normally we can also see mainly in the upper jaw implants make their problems on the sinuses and if there is we do with injections we do with magnetic field we try to to compensate but quite often we have to remove the implant I see so for uh then a follow-up question with that would be, so because many people above the age of 35 would have some dental work done, you know, either some fillings, root canal or whatever. So um, what are the options then, you know, at least to save the tooth or, um, I'm, you know, you're not going to look very good if your teeth are removed. So what are the options? <laughs> so what, what can someone do, you know, especially if they've got many teeth, one tooth, two teeth, maybe okay. But many teeth over the years, I mean, what are the options? <clears throat> That's a very difficult question. It has to be handled individualized. First of all, we have to, we have to look, is this dental toxic situation relevant for the patient? Because there are, honestly, even though I'm, I'm very much against root canaling, but there are millions of patients who, who compensate the root canal, which is a foreign body load. And so they are well, and they don't want to do anything. I can tell them if it's really significant or not for them. And if it is significant, or if they have a cancer, we are much more strict to remove or to, to, to try to heal. And then I can't give a rule. It is really individualized. That's why we do the, the dental uh, panoramic. And I also tell my, my, my colleagues all over the world, I have many doctors who cooperate with us, send me the panoramic x-ray. And then I can see if I can analyze that. But it has to be individualized. Right. OK. <clears throat> all right. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, attendees and participants are interested in your chart. You have a chart, right? The tooth and the, the teeth and the meridians, right? Yes. So unfortunately, it's in German. Uh, do you have one in English? <clears throat> we have the same. We have the same in English. The small one and the, the big one. This one we have in English. Uh, both and. There are also books about this. And in my book, Biological Medicine, I have a book in English, Biological Medicine. These dental things are explained very well, including this panoramic, uh, including this dental chart. So, okay. so we can get it there. There's a possibility that the, that the, <clears throat> that the uh, sorry, that these colleagues, they would send their email address to me or to Michaela, my, my academy manager, director, that they sent through Mr. Yoga, through you, the email address to me. And then we can, we can do uh, either an article on our, 
our newsletter or I can put them on my newsletter and then they will get the information. Awesome, awesome. I'm sure we all appreciate it. Uh, wonderful. Okay, next question, uh, Prof, would be this. Uh, what would you advise someone who has six RCT tooth? Okay, so I don't understand what that is. I suppose you do. Six RCT tooth. Root canals treated. RCT root. Canals. Okay, fabulous. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I can't answer this question. I need to see the right. panoramic. What can be done? Is it a tooth where you could do a a, an implant or is it a, a, a tooth on the margin, you know, the last in the row? I, I have to see. And it, also I have to see, are they infected or not? Okay. Okay. So that will be something more individualized than with you. Okay. Super individualized. Yes. I need to see the panoramic. Okay. Uh, next question is, um, so... Uh, which dental clinic or, you know, clinic in Southeast Asia or, you know, even in Malaysia, if possible, uh, that we could go to remove mercury uh, safely? <clears throat> I would have to ask around. I'm sure that there are biological clinics in, I know about Delhi there is, and then in, in Thailand also, and I also think that there is in Malaysia a dentist who does this, but I can't tell you the address. Yeah. Okay. Perhaps I could have my, my academy director, Michaela, to, to, uh, to ask around. All right. That would, that would be great if you could, Prof. Uh, next one is, uh, so testing for toxins. So you do quite a bit of tests, quite extensive testing as well. And um, I don't know, because you, do you have clinics here in Malaysia? You have what? Do you have clinics in Malaysia or partner clinics in Malaysia or mm -hmm. in Southeast Asia? Because you have some, some, some attendees also in Southeast Asia and Asia. So do you have any in this region? <clears throat> we have a clinic with Dr. Scott Lin in Kuala Lumpur who works together with us very, very closely. When I was in the, in the big clinic, when it's still open, uh, then we cooperated and now we are still cooperating with this, uh, this uh, Paracelsus Wellness Center in Kuala Lumpur. Okay, yes. all right. And they do the toxic test and they also send it to, to Switzerland, some of the, the difficult toxic tests. They are not so... The whole testing, the whole toxicology, when I do not know what they ha could have as a toxin, for example, an unclear neurological patient comes across, I don't know what they have as toxins. Then we do the, the whole profile. And this costs about a roundish 700 US dollar. The whole, it's not so expensive. Well, it is expensive, but it's not, not outrageous. Okay. All right. Uh, now, next one is about dentures. Uh, do dentures also harbor toxins? So there's two parts to this question. One is, do dentures harbors, uh, do dentures harbor toxins? And the other one is, uh, the question is, do we need to wash it? What was the, where was this question there? Do we need to wash it with any particular chemical solution like uh, polyden, right? Or will salt do, will salt do the job? No, that's the question. I did not understand the question. Is okay. it from a dentist, what they can do in their dental practice? No, it's uh, dentures. You have dentures. Ah. Dentures, yeah. So do dentures harbor toxins? And do we need some uh, chemical solutions like polyden or salt can do the job to, you know, to wash off these toxins? Well, when you have dentures which are removable, mm -hmm. Yes, this one you you should uh, you should clean every day. For example, you can you can clean it with a, a Himalayan salt solution or just with a toothbrush. You can clean it and put it into water, but this is enough normally. 
They don't collect. They don't collect uh, the. Uh, they don't collect the toxins. Okay. All right. Uh, your partner clinic in uh, KL. Do they also do the test that you were mentioning? Yes, as far as I know, they do the test. Okay. Mr. Yoga, who is who is uh, connected to you uh, closely, he knows the clinic personally, and he can give the the address. All right, great. One more is uh, crown. Okay, so this is how to replace crown teeth in cancer patients who lost all their natural teeth due to radiation, and uh, these crown teeth are made of palladium and porcelain. So, are they carcinogenic, or what other materials can we use? Safely. If the crowns they contain palladium, palladium, then they are cancerogenic. The mm. palladium is well less cancerogenic, but very, very neurogenic, and it interferes with the unconscious nerve system. Palladium is super toxic, and mm. it's 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 uh, unfortunately not really known that how toxic it is. But we find it also in gold dentures, you know, gold containing crowns and gold containing dentures. We found palladium all the time. Okay. All it's right. so toxic now that in, in Germany, in Switzerland, it's the use is forbidden now because even the official uh, medical associations, they found that it's so toxic. But in other countries, palladium is still used. Mm, okay, okay. Um, well, that's helpful information for the, the person who asked the question so that we don't end up in a worse situation, yeah? The next question is um, related to cancers in terms of treatment. Has the treatment that you're practicing here, Prof, uh, able to heal stage four pancreas cancer. Do you have experience there? Yes. <clears throat> yes, we have. Well, stage I'm four often. pancreas cancer, pancreatic cancer. Yeah, I know the pancreas cancer is one of the most difficult cancer to treat. And uh, well, as we all know, the orthodox medicine doesn't have a solution for, for cancer. Well, they give chemotherapies, but it comes back. And the problem is that, well, pancreas cancer stage four is also extremely difficult for us. It's the most difficult cancer situation. And we have cases, I do not have cases who survived for years, honestly, but what I, what I can say for sure that we can prolong the, the lifetime and even more important, we can increase the life quality significantly with our techniques. But it's always a, a very individualized, multi-level, multi-modality uh, approach which we do. Mm -hmm. Chemotherapy alone does not work on, on pancreas cancer. Okay. And uh, how many or is there a percentage of your patients who have uh, cancer patients who have had uh, who have been in remission for more than five or ten years even? Do you have uh, do you have a number in your mind or do you know? We only have studies. We only have a, a, a control group, a study group on breast cancer, and breast cancer stage one, two, and three, they survive for more than five years, or they they do not even reoccur. I do not have studies on our cancer patients uh, with other diseases because they come, when they come to us, they are very often in a progressed stage. We have many individual cases like the guy with the pancreas or like the guy with the bladder cancer and many, many ladies with breast cancer who just stopped the disease and they, they were surviving for many years. I have patients, cancer patients, who came with progress stage 10, 15 years ago, and they are stabilized. We have many of these kind of patients, but I, I can't say we can 
reach this situation in, in all the patients. It's not possible. Okay. All right. Um, okay. Well, there's so many questions. I'm going to do another one. Uh, this is one interesting question, which is about a person. Okay. For a cancer patient who has 30 crowned teeth made out of palladium and porcelain, would you recommend they remove all of them? <laughs> you know, that's, that's such a, if they, poor, poor person, if they have to remove all the crowns, principally, the answer is yes, to remove. But we have to see if these teeth are still vital or not. It is, again, it's a very, very individualized situation. So we would do a panoramic again, and yeah. we would do the toxic evaluation. So but let's, say, let's say you find that um, you need to remove a lot of them, most of them, maybe not all of them. What would you replace them with? Normally, normally we would re replace either with this new plastic. It depends how the situation is and how the financial uh, situation of the patient is. So the, we can remove them with this new peak, P E E K, peak uh, plastic material, which is much, much, much less expensive and it's easier to, to make the crowns. But the dentist said it is only provisoric or temporary. It holds for three or so years, but we already have patients who have these peak crowns since five years or more. This is the, the, the less expensive solution, the, <clears throat> or the ceramic, ceramic crowns. Okay. It's more, more, more uh, expensive. Okay, so you, um, I, would you know whether those, the, the PEK, the peak, is it readily available everywhere around the world or? I don't know. You know, I'm not a dentist. I'm a cancer doctor. <laughs> I, I don't know these details. Well, there it is available. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Any more? A lot of similar questions. Um, okay. Uh, everybody wants to know the place where the dental doctor that works with you lives. Not lives, sorry. Where they, where they practice. So everybody's interested with that. And uh, anything else? Prevention. Um, to prevent, right, uh, tooth issues. And uh, I know you're not a dentist, but uh, in relation to the questions earlier, what could we do for prevention of all these things? What would your suggestion be? Prevention of, you know, inflammation in the teeth, gum disease, you know, apart from brushing the teeth, flossing the teeth, is there anything else? Well, we, we say most has to be done with the nutrition and we favor very much a non-sugar and non-dairy protein. No cow dairy and no sugar because cow dairy, milk, cheese, cottage cheese, yogurt increases the chance of dental infections because it also interferes badly with the intestines. And of course, more important is clearly no sugar consume. None? None, yes, none. And how do you live? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, I suppose if you're already in a bad state, then you have no choice. But uh, so refined sugar is of course an issue. Uh, natural sugars, honey, would that be an issue? <clears throat> there are so many possibilities to, to replace the white sugar with other things. Okay. The problem is nowadays that, that when you look at the, the pre-prepared food, you know, the food which you can buy in the shops and so a lot of them and the creams and the yogurts and the all, all uh, they contain sugar. Everything contains sugar nowadays. And this is really, very, very bad. Wow, okay, fabulous. Well, um, Prof, I think we would all like to stay here till tomorrow with you. Yes. However, <laughs> you know, however it's uh, about uh, almost 6 p.m. in Malaysia and uh, in many of our ASEAN countries. 
Um, so, uh, and we don't want to take all uh, too much of your time. It, it's been amazing uh, to listen to what you have to say, your research, and it's been amazing to all the others. Uh, for all the other speakers, we had a great time. Thank you so much again, Prof. Uh, you've been to Malaysia, right? Yes, many times. Many times. So, well, when all this ends, well, hopefully we can meet. You know, and maybe our attendees can also. I'll definitely, we'll call. You know, do some other conference and summit, and you could join us in person. That would be great. But till then, Prof, thank you extremely a lot. Um, where can we? Where can we look up your book to get the? Or is there a way for us to get the chart somehow from you? As, as I told you, <clears throat> ask, ask uh, yeah. Yoga, Kayla. Yeah, ask, ask Mr. Yeah. Yoga. And he knows the addresses and he can tell you. So he, the addresses can go through him, I think. That's the best way. Okay, great, great. Well, all right then, Prof, thank you so much. Um, great, uh, great to have you and uh, wish you a pleasant journey, saving more lives. And uh, for our summit today, we have come to almost the end. So what I would like, uh, and we have, we had 100 plus today and now we still have about 80. You know, so people have uh, actually extended their time with us. Thank you so much, all the participants. I really hope it has been very, very useful, uh, meaningful. It definitely has for me. Uh, I'm a nutritionist by background. So even for me, I've learned quite a bit uh, today as well. So uh, before we uh, end our session, what we're going to do is, uh, let me just ask uh, Yoga, Yoga, can you uh, let me know, are we going ahead with the quiz? Uh, hi, uh, Suresh. Yeah, good, good evening. And uh, yeah, it's been an awesome day, but you know, I think people must be pretty tired and you probably see the numbers starting to dwindle. So why, why don't we just close it? Because we're going to have more of these sessions. And what we can do is, uh, we, the, the, book, uh, the book is here. Yeah, I mean, we can still give it away the next session. Maybe, um, maybe we, can, we can do it then because it's been a long day, really. Uh, so I, I leave it to you as the host and the MC, and uh, you know, we we, we can uh, just do the close because Alex is still in here. Alex was complaining about his line dropping, so if we can just do the close and thank everybody, I think that would be fine. Okay, so just before that, I'm going to share the QR code uh, to all the attendees and participants. Give us feedback, please, for the afternoon session. So let me just. Uh, flash the QR code for a moment and just give us your feedback yeah, about how the sessions went in the afternoon. And then I'll invite Alex Kumar to do the closing. Yeah?